Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, Namrata, for such a kind introduction. And uh, thank you, Gyan, for having me in such an elite gathering. Uh, so are we okay with the slides? Are the slides on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's start off. And the basic thing is that I still feel that each ophthalmologist needs to look at the disc. That is the very, very basis because whatever you do or say, and the basic marker is the disc for glaucoma. Why? Because so many cases, the intraocular pressure at the first visit may be normal. And now we are having so many normal tension glaucomas where the pressure is normal. So you just can't rely on the pressure. And as a matter of fact, pressure is not in the diagnosis of glaucoma. So how can you depend on that? Beyond that, I agree with you that perimetry is very, very important, but let us talk about India. Let's talk about Asia as a whole. And believe me, they are, the access to perimetry is very limited. It's an expensive tool. All of us know that patients are very, very, uh, <clears throat> they are really hacked up saying that it's such a difficult test. And the first time to get a right thing in it is really a tough job. Therefore, you must remember that the heart of glaucoma evaluation is the diagnosis through a disc. This was a gentleman around 54 year old who came to me, thick corneas, fields were normal, disc was, the NRR was really healthy, the pressure on the diagonal variation was 20 to 24 because of the thick corneas. Since there was no family history, though he was a one-eyed patient, I thought, all right, let me just watch him. So called him later for after six months, but came in after a year and I was quite shocked to see that though the fields were still normal, there was a wedge defect over here. What it taught me very clearly was that the structural damage is the first to occur. And then we went back and saw that the OCT, which was normal, has now deteriorated. So that told us that disc is an important, very, very important marker. But yes, I must accept that sometimes the fields may be the first marker. And especially in cases where there's a tessellated fundus or it may be not very easy to look at the disc because of the cataracts and all, they, it may not be so always that you will detect the structural damage. But definitely a disc must be the first thing that you have to really look well into. And what are you looking at? Basically, what we are looking at is the neuroretinal rim. So it is the 1.2 million axons coming from the ganglion cells all around our retina, which get collected together in these bundles. And it is this neuroretinal rim we are worried about. All these axons are coming straight from the macula out here. Those <coughs> from the temporal are going arching out up and down while the nasal ones are coming the way we see them over here. And the best examination indeed is through a 90D because it gives us a stereoscopic image on a slit lamp, but everybody has an ophthalmoscope. So nobody can say, I'm sorry, I could look at the disc. That is not an excuse at all. Yes, 90D is the best. And what are we looking at? We are looking at the scleral ring. We are then looking at the neuroretinal rim, which is the thing to look at. But we do look at the retinal nerve fiber layers I had just shown over there that this may be the first damage that you may detect. And then we are looking at the peripapillary atrophy. And then, yes, the most imp another important marker is the optic disc hemorrhage. Very, very important is, is in tool. I am, uh, like Gyan told us, it is for general ophthalmologists, please, please, even when I teach and I go back again and look at my discs, the best and the most important thing simply to look at the is in tool that the inferior disc is the thickest followed by superior, followed by nasal, followed by temporal. And that is what you have to look at. So if because the inferior fibers are the thickest followed by superior, followed by nasal. And once you find that this is not okay, immediately you'll become suspicious. Forget everything else. This is something which you cannot miss. And the moment you look at this, then you see, oh, there's a wedge defect as well. All these things may again be missed because there are so many cases of tessellated fundus, et cetera. But this you are unlikely to miss. So please follow the is in true. The color is also very, very important. It has to be pink. And it's very, very important. I learned quite late that 
almost 40% of the major studies have detected their glaucomas or the progressions due to fundus photographs. Obviously, there were stereo photographs, but since then, I've already in all my glaucoma patients, I add on and all general practitioners, if they have a fundus photography, they should do it in all those cases. So assess the disc with dilatation, make sure there's no overexposure. Always do red free photography because that will give you the best images and the best chance of detecting the wedge defects. You must know the size of the disc. This is a problem that we face every day that there are large cups, but you must understand that the size of disc varies between 1.4 to 2 millimeters. And uh, if you have a Welshner ophthalmoscope, the small uh, five degree aperture is equivalent to that disc size over here. But more important is that you are all uh, seeing it through the 90D or a 60D or whatever you have. And over here, if you do a marking with the help of your uh, slit lamp, you'll get the mark over here about how much is the uh, disc. And then you can multiply by 1.3 if you are doing a 90D, which usually is there. Why do you want to do this? So commonly we see, anybody who sees a large cup says, oh, this is glaucoma. You'd see the other eye if they are symmetrical. It could be just a physiological cup. Look at this now. Okay, the cups are large, but the isn't rule is maintained. The NRR is healthy. The fibers are quite fine. The striations are good. There's no wedge defect over there. <clears throat> Obviously, if there's an asymmetry, you are a little worried. Yeah, that it could be glaucoma. So you will immediately check up. But again, please have a look. Plus, please, before you start doing 100 tests and start wasting the money for patients, especially in Corona, uh, the, uh, the people are really handicapped as far as the money is concerned. Please be sure. Please do your clinical examinations well. And as you can see, the disc is, as you can see, the disc here is smaller than the disc over here. So the larger cup is because of the larger disc. You do a field, you waste the money, and the, this is going to be normal. You do an OCT, it's going to be normal, and it tells you, yes, you are dealing with a larger disc, as you can see very well over here. And this is what is happening every day. I see small children, whenever you are taking a pressure, they'll squeeze their eyes and the pressure will be high. And the parents are crying and they are coming all over and saying, oh, sir, this year she has got glaucoma. The first thing you got to do is relax the patient, take a pressure very, very calmly and quietly, which will turn out to be normal. In most of the mm -hmm. cases, check the NRR is healthy. Everything is good. Make the parents sit down. And then you realize they are having similar cups. So it's just a physiological cupping, which the whole family is having. If you have to investigate anybody, please do it to the parents because they are having similar things. But day in and day out, people are doing so many tests on children, which is totally, totally redundant. So please be careful. Again, the parapapillary atrophy, especially the beta zone, uh, where you can see the large choroidal vessels because the RP is gone. And if this stretches out, that means this is the area where the uh, field effects are going to occur. And this is important in some ways. Uh, the vascular changes are important too in some cases because you can the general ophthalmologist can pick up that, okay, there's a bayoneting over here. Sometimes there is a bearing of circumlinear vessels means there was a tissue or an NRR over here, which has now died and the vessel is bared over here, which will later fall into the thing. There could be nasalization of vessels. Again, overpass cupping the same thing. There was a tissue over here, which is died. And this again, this vessel is going to drop causing bayoneting later. Splinter hemorrhage is a very, very important mm -hmm. marker, more commonly seen in normal tension glaucoma. It will mostly proceed to uh, nerve fiber loss and visual field loss. You have to be very, very cautious. It means that possibly there is a glaucoma and possibly we, if there is already a proven glaucoma, then we are not treating the patient aggressively enough and we need to be more aggressive on that. Obviously, the cause is not very clear, but people say that the rim tissue is deteriorating and therefore the vascular architecture succumbs to that. Remember that ganglion cells in the periphery send their fibers to the periphery and those in the center are coming from the central area. And therefore, if the, the pressure is over here, there'll be a parasitical scotoma. If there's rare, you'll have a central arcuate. If it is in the here, 
it will be peripheral arcuate and if it is just over here you may get a nasal step so if the whole rim is gone you will have a beautiful total arcuate over here <clears throat> so this you can really see you can see the wedge defect over here and you have to always correlate so many times there will be things which may not be correlating you may get a beautiful arcuate scotoma because of a brvo so if there is a clear cut defect over here there is a inferior temporal defect there is a superior nasal field defect you know that you are doing the right thing again the nrr is almost looking healthy but you look there is a wedge defect over here and then you realize that only the peripheral fibers are gone so there is just a nasal step over here you have to watch very carefully many a times the area which was looking normal it may not be in the periphery or in these areas but again this becomes suspiciously bad same way you can look at the notch which is increasing over their years and that is the fun of doing a, for a serial photography be very very careful if you get pale discs which are not much cupped the first thing in india that you have to think am i dealing with an angle closure glaucoma this is dr ramanjit's paper and uh, it clearly shows that many of the glaucomatous discs of angle closure glaucoma do not have a serious cup but they are quite pale but yes obviously the other thing we will think of is a neurological disease which could be neuritis ischemia granulomatous hereditary traumatic toxic irradiation and what not but most important indeed is the compression and you have to do an mri and you have to look at the tumors which could be anywhere or it could mostly in the pituitary so you have to watch whether the it's a pale neurological disc always do a gonioscopy myopic discs are really really bad and difficult to handle because everything is stretched out you can hardly make out the cup and especially if the myopia is greater than the 12 diopters it's quite a mess and <clears throat> uh, what basically happens here is because of the stretch out lamina cribrosa uh, the chances that the damage will occur even at lower pressures is quite high so you have to be very very alert obviously the differential would be optic disc colobomas or there could be a small pit which you have to be very careful about but basically you should see that the rim if the rim is not healthy and symmetrically there is a disc uh, there is a defect in the field you know that you are dealing with glaucoma and if you have large cups like i showed you with everything healthy you have to go step by step look at the striations there is no wedge defect nrr is healthy they are symmetrical you are you know that the fields and the oct will be normal so please remember the disc photos and the assessment of the disc along with rnfl is useful in very useful in early glaucomas but in late glaucomas they may not be that useful and the fields would be things that we should follow so the take home message is check for the size please check for the size check the neuro retinal rim follow the isn't rule look for vascular <laughs> changes look for asymmetry please document serially and i must show this is dr rajiv garu who was our dghs just now and he has serially documented having nothing over there with him he has just documented with a pen and a paper how beautifully he has shown how the uh, disc has deteriorated and the disc is crying please save me so please follow it and please please there is a request to all cataract surgeons dilate the patient 3 weeks post op you look at the disc there is innumerable number of patients i am getting which are post cataract in which uh, they are not we looked at they have glaucoma and this glaucoma has not been looked at and they come to us when it is so far on that we really can't do much over there it will be good for the patient will be good for this panel that we don't get advanced patients so please please dilate and have a look at your patients to look at the disc detect glaucoma early so we can all be safe thank you very much for your kind attention